Hello, Cancer. Welcome to your Feb February, no, March 2024 reading. This reading is all about your career. And we will take a look at what can you expect in the area of Career, abundance, and wealth. This may resonate with you if you have cancer placement in sun, moon, rising, or Venus. My darling, I have a fantastic reading lined up for you. I'm going to consult three oracle decks, which you can see right in front of you, and three tarot decks. The oracle decks are all about outline, what energy is coming towards you. The tarot decks are for clarifying purposes to get into the whys, the whats, and the hows. Now, I want you to make sure, because this is going to be a fairly long reading, right? About 30 minutes or so. So I want to make sure that you're relatively calm and you're not distracted by anything, because I really want you to tap into the energy. Save this reading if this is not the, you know, an adequate or an ample time for you to watch this. Then save this reading and come back to it at a later time. If this is your first time, make sure to subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon so that you get these readings as soon as I publish them and I publish them on a monthly basis. If you are a returning subscriber, I thank you for your love, your support and your continuous, your con continuous outpouring of blessings towards me and my channel and the rest of the collective as a matter of fact. All right, with all of those fantastic intro out of the way, let's get right into your reading. Cancer, I am going to consult, as I've already mentioned, three oracle decks to find out the overarching energy. This reading is not time sensitive or time specific, although I'm publishing this in March of 2024, whenever you stumble upon it. It is your reading if it resonates. That's the first criteria for any divination tool reading to resonate or to for any divination tool reading to apply with for you to see my God, what's wrong with me for you to see if it is resonating. All right. Let's find out what can you expect as it relates to your career, abundance and wealth. My focus is more the remainder of the year. So let's find out what can you res what can you resonate? What can you expect is what my expectation is. Your first card is the night. You're coming out of a, a dark, dark period. It's number 33. Gemini got this card as well. Your second card is balance, which is number four. Yeah, absolutely. You are coming out of a, a dark period of your life. You're balancing your priorities. You're balancing what is right for you. You're balancing your family life. You're balancing your work life. And then you're soaring 46, which is number 10, which is essentially the completion of a journey and the beginning of a journey. And I'm loving this. I'm loving this. 33 could be a significant number because we do not reduce master numbers. 33 is also Christ consciousness. Why don't I bring this down a little bit so that you can see the cards fairly well. Balance is number four. I would be interested to see if I get any other four cards to the tarot decks. And 46 is about soaring high. I love just these three cards. This, just the, the story, the, the storyline that I'm getting out of these three cards alone. You coming out of a, a period of depression, a period of feeling worthless, a period of failure, a period of hopelessness to a period of balance. And it's interesting. Do you see? Okay, let me bring these cards closer to you so that you can see it. So from the darkness to the balance, do you see the moon guiding you? 
even in the darkness when there is no sunlight the moon is supposed to be our mother and it also signifies you your energy cancer is moon right cancer is ruled by the moon so your energy you never have given up hope even during these tough times and now and now you are soaring and you will be soaring. Okay, all right. Let me take some more cards. This reading is fantastic. So far, so good. I will get more information as I dive into the tarot cards. If this is your first time on my, on my channel and if you hear me go through like a five, six, that seconds pause that's because i'm listening to my spirit guides okay boundaries Ooh, i love that card cancer i absolutely love that card for you because this is how you're balancing your energy my love by setting boundaries remember i was saying to you that in you're balancing your home life, your work life, and you're setting boundaries. Okay, and that's how you're soaring because he, one of the ways to be successful in life is to know your own limit and make sure that people understand what those limits are. Truth and new beginning. Did I not say that to you that you are about to start something new? Truth. You're finally facing your own truth. You're letting people know your truth, that this, these are your boundaries. And you're starting a new beginning and you're soaring because you have balanced your life. You have gone through the dark night. You have gone through those upheavals. You've gone through those times of failure. And you, you have learned your lesson. That's the only way you have balanced it. You accepted the truth. So here's the thing, though. Making sure that you can see the cards. Hang on a second. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring these cards over here so that you have a fantastic view of all the cards, not just one or two. How about now? Can you see it all? Okay. So what I was saying is that you actually accepted your own truth. If you always had an issue with saying no to people, then that's your personal truth. That means you are a people pleaser. I'm not saying all of you are, but I'm just saying this could have been one of your truths where you finally realized that, you know, you perhaps were a people pleaser and that made you sad because sometimes you had to sacrifice your own your own time, right? Perhaps your money, your own mental health to please someone else. And once you set that boundary and once you accepted that truth and balanced that truth within you, now you're soaring with a new beginning. And this is all going to play out in your life. Look at what is at the bottom of the deck. I think I'm taking way too many cards, but they're all meant for you. Bottom of the deck is clarity. This is the clarity you were lacking, my dearest. And this is the clarity that you're about to find right now. And this is the clarity that will give you a new beginning. New beginnings is plural. So there's more than one opportunity coming your way. I want to make sure you can see all of these cards. How about now? Fantastic. All right. One more oracle deck to go through. One more oracle deck to go through here. Okay. I'm loving this reading. And honestly, one of the reasons I, I use oracle cards because with tarot, you need somebody else. If you don't know how to read tarot, you need somebody else to read it for you. With oracle cards, the messages are so clean and clear, right? You don't have to be a divination tool reader to know what the messages are. And I hope as you're seeing these cards, mind you, sometimes when you are seeing these cards, you may get other messages from your spiritual guidance team directly, sort of bypassing me, right? And I hope 
And I hope that you're listening to those messages. Your first card is past life healing, Hecate. What that tells me is Hecate is a very powerful priestess. What that tells me is that you are actually breaking generational curse here. Generational curse says perhaps you come from a long line of people pleaser. Perhaps you come from a long line of, of ancestors who have given up halfway through. Perhaps you come from a, a, a long line of forefathers and foremothers who were taken advantage of. That's another thing I heard, that you're not going to let people take advantage of you anymore. Okay. So Hecate is past life healing. And whenever I see that card, I think of breaking generational curses. Okay. What else? Let's take a couple more. What else can I channel for you? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Rest, star maiden. Of course you have to rest, my darling. And protect your energy. My dearest, my sweetheart, can I just tell you how fantastic and how synchronous this reading is. Boundaries and protect your energy. Truth and tell the truth, right? Spirit just repeated everything, everything twice for you. Just to make sure that you understand how profound this reading is. Okay, so before I start taking tarot, What can you expect when it comes to your career, abundance, and wealth? First of all, you can expect empowerment. And actually, before I go any further, I thought I saw the empowerment card I did at the back of this deck. I'm not going to take it, but I thought I saw it. And look at this, this particular deck has inner strength. How fantastic is this reading? I'm not going to take them because I'm running out of space here, right? But you know that those two cards are at the back of those two decks. You are going through a personal empowerment right now, inner strength. You are learning that you have to know your own truth. You have to tell that truth to yourself first before you announce it to the rest of the world. And you have to have a clarity about that truth. You have to know who you are. And you also have to understand that you carry within your DNA, you carry within your soul, you carry within your psyche all the information dating back since the dawn of time, you also carry within you the ancestral curses. Of course, not just curses. You you also carry the good things, the good omens and the bad omens. And you're learning that, right? Spirit is asking you to protect your energy. Protect your energy from uh, energy vampires around you, people at work who are who don't have the best best interest at heart for you. Spirit is also asking you to protect your energy from ancestors in the past who really didn't know how to show up authentically, right? So you need to have the clarity about it and you need to protect your energy. For you to protect your energy, you need to rest. You are ruled by the moon. And Celine is resting on this crescent moon. Do you see that? So for you to find information from the divine and your spiritual guidance team, you really have to rest. 
cancers are not known for quote unquote hard work, if I can say it that way. That's more for the Capricorns, the Sagittarius of the world. Your true potential, your true divination, your true power and prowess lie in the fact that you sit there relaxed and settled in your on your throne and information should come to you so you shouldn't be chasing anything it's what spirit is saying stay still everything will come to you information ideas epiphanies will come to you right that's what the balance card is once you rest there's so many moon references here all over the, these cards. Once you rest, once you become your divine feminine self that you are, cancer's, cancer is the most divine feminine sign in the 12, amongst the 12 signs in the zodiac cycle. So once you truly, truly embody your divine feminine self, you will balance yourself, you will find clarity and new beginnings. I think that's that's the end of the old cycle where you're chasing like a like a Sagittarius or a Capricorn or even perhaps a, a Taurus or one of those fire signs. No, absolutely not. You are a water sign. You're supposed to flow like the water. You're supposed to be free flowing and you're supposed to be still. Free flowing and still. I know there's a bit, bit of a juxtaposition there, but that's your power. You are absolute divine feminine embodiment. And this is once you have balanced your energy, your core energy, once you have found clarity to your own truth and you've spoken the truth, once you have balanced all the ancestral curses that you've carried into this lifetime, once you have had the chance to rest and communicate with the divine, then you have found your balance, then you have found your footing, and then you're going to take off, and then you're going to soar, and you will welcome new beginnings. Now let's find out what these new beginnings have in store for you, Cancer. I hope you are still with me, right? So here's another thing. Anybody listening in? Look at this. As soon as I split the deck, I have the Ace of Inspiration. I have the moon. And it's a pink moon, no less. What was I saying? For those of you listening in, Cancer or otherwise, when you're listening to a tarot reading, tarot is not supposed to be straightforward. It's an esoteric language. So if you get impatient and annoyed and you're like, oh, but she's not giving me specific. I need specifics. Yeah, I'm getting to the specifics. But you really have to understand. Again, I split the deck after shuffling high priestess, moon energy, and moon again. My God, this reading is so divinely guided. So divinely guided. It's not even funny. Okay. So I want specifics. Let's find out what, when, and how all of this will play out. What specifically are we expecting right now? Or, or can you expect? I have the seven of pentacles, right? So pentacles is all about earthly possession. So if you have been struggling with either accumulating money earning more money and you've been waiting for for things to happen for you and you've been waiting look how wonderfully paved this path is your wait is over my darling seven of pentacles is a wait card your wait is over is that what spirit is telling me seven could be a significant number seven of the month could be a significant number july i'm hearing is a significant number Okay, flowers, I don't know, do you have a floral shop? Flower is a significant number. And then you have, flower is a significant number? Huh? Why did I say something like that? 
flower is not a significant number, but something to do with number and flowers. Somebody will give you seven flowers. Uh, something to do, because usually, okay, when I'm reading, I'm not in my conscious brain. I'm in a trance state, like a semi-trance state. I'm in my gamma state. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can Google it. So if I'm saying things, those Freudian slips, they're not, they should mean something. So I don't know what seven and flower has to do with anything. All right, you have, where am I? The magician. You are manifesting a new beginning, a balanced new beginning at that. Okay, that's an Aries Gemini energy. So magician tells me that, oh, this is upon you right now because Aries Gemini, Aries season starts in April, Gemini is all the way through May. So April, May, 7th of the month could be very important for you. There could be a Gemini or an Aries that will help influence you in, in some way or fashion. This card had to come out. Ace of, oh, come on, Ace of Voices that oh sorry muse of voices that's the king of swords okay what else is there oh the emperor of course the emperor so there's too many aries cards here so let me tell you what i'm seeing right now okay i'm seeing a lot of money i'm seeing a lot of empire building i'm also seeing boss energy let me take a sip of water why don't i pause this reading for a second so this is what i'm seeing with the magician card here, you're taking a lot of ideas from the ether and making it real. So if you are a business owner or somebody who's break, breaking into sort of a self-funded business or a project, then you are getting inspired. You're getting a lot of information from the ether and you are going to make something out of nothing. If you're thinking of investing in something, this is, I think a lot of your wealth will come through investment is what I'm hearing. A lot of your wealth is will come from investment. You have the Gemini card, which is ruled by Mercury. So if you're a public speaker, a professor, uh, if you are a politician, a community service personnel, if you are a TV presenter, a social media influencer, anywhere where you use your voice, like your literal voice, where you where you have to speak for a living, you could be a teacher as well. This is how you're going to accumulate your wealth is what I'm hearing because magician is sitting absolutely next to the seven of pentacles. You also have the King of Swords, which is the Muse of Voices in this deck. King of Swords is a is an air sign, right? It signifies Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. You don't have to be, but you could be dealing with one, or you could have those placements in your chart, rising or perhaps Mars. Go look up your rising or Mars, Mars sign. Um, you probably have Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. If you are in law enforcement, justice system, something to do with law, justice, compliance, policy, that's where you are going to make a name name of, or name from. Am I saying this the right? My English is all over the map today. And you will also make tremendous wealth. The emperor card is here, which is again Aries energy, right? Emperor is all about empire building, em, em, uh, emperor is decisive, emperor is also a boss, a CAO, a CEO, a CFO, a COO. So you probably will be the head of an organization. I'm also hearing a head of a city or a country. So if I have to sum it up specifically, if you're in law enforcement, justice, compliance, policy making, you will see a stratus. What is it? Stratus. Oh my God. I can't see the word. Okay. Stratospheric. Yes, it finally came to me. A stratospheric rise. 
That's what the soar is. If you're in those fields, you will be soaring. If you are in any kind of public speaking arena, you will be soaring. If you're a teacher, a professor, um, a politician, an influencer, anywhere where you have to speak to people, right? Your career will soar. If you are a head of an organization or you are a business owner and you are either selling, I'm also hearing this, that you probably will be selling your business or you will acquire smaller business and you, you will build your empire, right? I have to come back to this card, the seven of pentacles and the flower. There's something to do with flowers and seven. I don't know yet. What does that mean? Oh, by the way, remember I was telling you if I want to see if another four cards come out. Remember this card. Oh, now I made a mess of all of these things. See, this is a four balance. Emperor is a four. So you already have two fours on the on the board, right? So something to do with flowers. I don't know what that means. Maybe you will meet your future business partner or your future employer at a flower shop. Okay, this is very specific, Cancer. All right, so let's take a few more tarot cards. So this is the second tarot deck. So we have an idea of how you're making your fortune and you're definitely making a fortune. Is there anything else? I think we have a timeline. It's happening in Aries Gemini season. April, May 7 is a uh, an important number. Four is an important number. We already talked about it. What else? What else? What else can I channel for you? Is there anything specific? Spirit. Is there anything else that I can channel? I'm also seeing influence of somebody, Aries or Gemini. Gemini influence is coming through so much. And it's interesting because I just did Gemini's reading. And it was one heck of an intense reading. You have the Four of Swords. Spirit is asking you to rest. When you're still and you're resting... It, information will come to you. And I think when you're not chasing, you're just, maybe you're exploring a flower shop or you're walking through a garden or you're just, you know, walking your dog in the park and you will stumble upon someone. I will tell you this, uh, many, many years ago, this was back in 2007, I was visiting an ex, boyfriend, fiance actually at the time, and uh, he used to live almost two and a half hours away from where I used to live. And I was visiting him for like two or three days. And he he lived near a, a massive lake. So I was just walking along the the lakeside. And I stumbled upon this gentleman who was walking his dog. And we we did start talking. And at one point he said... You seem like a very smart person. You're an accountant. And I am actually the CEO of the city, the, the city that my boyfriend, my fiance used to live. And they were looking for a treasurer, a CFO. And he asked me, he said, would you come in for an interview, like an informal interview? This was back in 2007. And it changed my career trajectory. Those of you who have been on with me on this journey, you know I'm a public servant. I work for the government. But before that encounter, I was in the private sector. And it really changed my life. So think about it this way. If I were to go to a tarot reader just before that encounter, they probably would have said, hey, just, you know, 
relax and rest, go for a walk and and universe will send somebody your way and this will change your life. And to me, I shouldn't say to me because I know how tarot goes, but if I didn't have the, the ability to read tarot and the ability to connect with the divine, then I probably would have thought that was a very vague message. So sometimes when you're listening to me, you may think that these are vague messages. They're not. I'm actually giving you very specific messages. You just have to go through that that experience to know that these messages are true, these messages are accurate. So what spirit is basically saying to you is when you rest, when you're in a very relaxed environment, this is when you will either encounter someone or this is when your ideas will come to you. This is when divine will tell you what, what is required of you and divine will give you your breakthrough. So you have the four of swords. What else? Resting is such an important message that is coming through. So please, please, please listen to what I'm saying. This reading, the messages that are coming through is about to change your life. Okay. So this is the five of the five of wands. Four of swords and five of wands came close together, side by side. Five of wands is all about conflict, inner conflict, outer conflict. You have gone through a lot, Cancer, when it comes to your career, abundance and wealth. Spirit is asking you to rest. Spirit is asking you that you need to walk away, set boundaries. You can't deal with the same group of people who are becoming toxic in your life. So you have to rest. You have to retreat. Okay, that's the message. Wherever you are. If that environment and the people in that environment is not conducive to your mental health, to your proper mental health and to your ascension and your growth, then they're not your people. They're not your tribe. Another five card. There's two fives. Four, five, five. April 5th could be significant, May 4th could be significant, May 5th could be significant. Write down these dates. Do not give up hope. Two fives are side by side. If you thought that your entire life would be just a continuous cycle of going in and out of depression, going in and out of failures, going in and out of of hearing the word no, then you're kidding yourself, my darling. One one more card from this deck. Let's see what else Spirit has to say. Spirit is asking me to remind you April and May, extremely significant for you this year. Anything else, Spirit? Anything else? Ace of Cups. Ace of Cups. Ace, aces are new beginnings, and Spirit just reminded me that Ace of Cups is, look at that, look at the depiction of this, this card. These people are drinking, they're happy, they're merrymaking. Listen, you will, I'm telling you over and over again, by, by the end of May, save this reading, come back, leave me a comment, right? Because when you comment something, it, it almost allows you to search back the reading again, save it, pin this reading. I'm telling you, come back in May and tell me that this didn't play out. You will be in a completely different mental state than where you are now. And you will find your tribe. These individuals will... So it's almost like you will walk into a room and everybody will light up. People will be like, we want to hear more from you. We want to hear about your ideas. And we love it. We want... And, and not only that, they, you know, if you have struggled in the past... In, in getting budget, in getting funding, that will no longer be an issue because I think that's what the Seven of Pentacles is because Pentacles is all about money. That money will come to you and ideas will come to you 
And I think the, the, the significance of flower is it will come to you without any effort is what I'm hearing. Without any effort. Like you don't have to like you don't have to sell yourself, you don't have to sell your ideas, you don't have to convince people anymore. That will be the level with your career. Okay? So this is my final deck. So let's see what message, final message. A spirit would like to give you. I was just listening in. I was just looking at this card. Do you see the mirror? The mirror is reflecting back the truth. So you will have people in your life now, Cancer, who will reflect your truth back to you, meaning not, not necessarily they're going to put you on your, although they should, because true friends and true partners should really put up a mirror and and show you who 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 you truly are that's the job of a true soulmate true friendship true partnership right they should not just tell you how good you are but also reflect back things that are not good about you that are not that are not working for you but further to that i think what i'm seeing with that reflection of the mirror that your ideas will be reflected back like the people that you are going to come in contact with very, very quickly in this year, like I said, April, May, June, perhaps even. These are the people who are going to reverberate your ideas because you will come into their life at a time when they themselves are thinking of these ideas and thinking of these these projects and endeavors and you come in, you're just feeding off of each other. That's what the reflecting of the mirror tells me, right? And what a wonderful energy that is. All right. Any advice for my Cancer Collective? Any advice? Anything else? Six of Cups. Okay. There could be a person coming back from the past. This is not a love reading. There could be a person coming back from the past, perhaps a former employer or a colleague that will re who will reconnect with you and the two of you will, will start hammering out a new plan of business, perhaps a former boss coming in because they have moved to a new company and they would like to take you with you is what I'm hearing. So there is a soul contract. The two of you have decided this in a in a past life. There is a reconciliation, right? I'm also hearing that perhaps a childhood friend and you will connect, perhaps in, at a coffee shop or in a flower shop or perhaps at a park, a childhood friend and you will connect and the two of you will have this conversation about all the things that you to used to talk about when you were children, exploring space, like, you know, outer space, exploring ideas, creating products, opening a store, that idea will come online. Okay, that's what the Six of Cups is. All right, what else? What else can I tell you? I'm loving your reading. It's such a sweet gentle, kind, understanding reading. Oh my God, I'm loving it. I do have cancer placement, not in my top four, but it doesn't matter. I'm claiming this. What else can I channel for my cancer collective? You have the judgment. Judgment is resurrection. Judgment is acceptance. Judgment is awakening. Judgment is assessment. Six of Cups is harmony. Six of Cups is happiness. So, so 
Spirit is asking you to have childlike enthusiasm. Play. Spirit is asking you. That's what the boundary card is. Spirit is saying, make time to play and make time to rest. That's number one. Approach life with a childlike enthusiasm. That's number two. People coming back from your past, make sure you're making the right assessment. There could be somebody that you had a fallen out with in the past, a colleague, a business partner. They're coming back because they had an awakening. They're apologetic. They may have wronged you. They're apologetic. They're coming back. Spirit is asking you to use your discretion and assessment. If they're truly coming back with a sense of reconciliation and harmony and the truth, then please accept them. And the two of you would be doing fantastic work together. Spirit is also asking you to, to listen to your soul. That's the rest card is here, the four of souls. Listen to your soul. There are information coming from your past lives things that you have accomplished in your past life. You are an infinite being with many, many past lives. And all of these information are, are trying to come to you, right? So Spirit is asking you to use your judgment, your discretion. You are ruled by the moon. You are Selene, goddess. Intuition is your thing, Cancer. Intuition is your thing, right? Some of you could be tarot readers like myself. You know you, you have a like a fantastic intuition. You know how to work with your intuition. Perhaps some of you will work with your intuition. You have the seven of wands. Mm, this is interesting. Spirit is asking you not to be defensive. Have courage. Spirit is also saying you will be... You shall overcome all your challenges. The challenges that are in front of you with the five of wands and the five of cups. You will overcome all your challenges. You have the eight of cups. There is a shift, which I've already talked about. A change that this is a fantastic change. I think some of you are a little afraid of change. And you, it's, you see change as a challenge unto itself. No, no. Change is uncomfortable because it is pushing you out of your place of comfort. Comfort should be painful, not change, is what Spirit is telling me. And you will also emotionally withdraw from people who are not, no longer part of your divine plan and there is a divine plan you have the six of pentacles my darling you will receive you will receive tremendous abundance you will receive tremendous tremendous abundance there is no doubt in my mind about that and you will also give look at the crescent moon again the depiction of the moon throughout this reading is just uncanny. You will receive and you will give. You will have access to so much wealth that you will also give back. You will also give back equally. All right. What else? Remember I said somebody may come back from the past and apologize to you. This is the page of cup. This person will come back from the past and apologize to you with their cup of love, with their cup of apology. But once the two of you, if, if they're sincere, this person and you will get together and you will absolutely, absolutely will make magic. Now, bottom of the deck, as if all of this wasn't enough, bottom of the deck is the will of fortune. It's karma, it's destiny. It's letting go of the old, welcoming the new, right? So this is a karmic cycle that started in your past life and also in your past in this lifetime that you are balancing right now. So this is almost 44 into this reading, 44 minutes into this reading. Uh, this is the longest reading I've done in the series so far. Cancer, 
I can't emphasize this enough for you. April, May are going to be significant months. Number seven is significant in your life because seven came out again with the seven of wands. Wheel of Fortune is number 10, right? You have new beginnings. You have to trust your own truth. Rest, because when you're resting, when you're still, when you're in your uh, meditative mode, when you're in your divine feminine mode, this is when spirit can provide you downloads. There are people coming back from your past who will provide you with tremendous support and love. Spirit is asking you to use your discretion, use your intuition, like literally use it to build your abundance, to build your empire. I will leave the reading here for you. Save it. Leave me a comment. Let me know how this resonated. Until next time I see you, take very good care of yourself. Bye, my love.